Welcome to Hope Academy, my name is Mr. O, oh, and today I'm going to be starting the series on Mathematics Level 2 Subject Test. Uh, other names for it is Math 2C or Math 2. Uh, duly note that Math 1 is not considered um, acceptable by many private colleges and even for public universities too these days. And so the preparation is based around you getting prepared for specifically Math Level 2. As a prior video, I recommend also the TI-89 because it is allowed on the exam for this. And I do also want to state that usually how I do these exams is that first I do the question real quick and then I'm going to go into depth as to how to do the question so that you can understand how to go about doing these questions quickly and to uh, work towards getting the perfect score or 800 on the math 2C. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on this question. So for number 17, what is the distance in between the points that? Okay. So it's going to be So for my for first answer, my answer is going to be D for number 17. And so now I'm going to go ahead and explain to you how I was able to get to D so quickly. And so for number 17, the, the thing you need to remember is that there is a formula that is important in order to find distance between two points. And so for this question number 17, uh, when I look at number 17, I see that they talk about the points negative 3, 6, 7, and 2, negative 1, 4. And so when they are talking about this type of question, there is a concept called the distance formula that exists. And the formula looks like this. The distance equals to square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. And so usually x1, x2 doesn't really matter which one you assign for which point. You just need to make sure to be consistent that if you're going to use the first point, that the first point is going to always represent in the, each component and such. But there is a little trickiness to this specific question. If you notice, there is not just an x and y, there's also what we call a z or three-dimensional thing that's usually covered in multivariable calculus. But you don't really need to know multivariable for this. The idea is that you need to know how to expand on the distance formula in order to make this happen. And so what I did was that I took this original formula and actually continued it and did z1 minus z2 squared like this. And so this will help me find the, the distance for specifically three dimensional based uh, values for two points. And so what I did on the calculator, if you notice when I was punching in, was that I actually punched in D equals to, and I'm going to write down exactly what I punched in. I wrote, and I put a parenthesis because I need to be careful, 2 minus, because I'm following this, 2 minus negative 3 squared plus, and I did negative 1, so being consistent, because I did this point to this point, so negative 1 minus 6 squared plus, now this is going to be Z, so 4 minus 7 squared. And I just punched it into the calculator, and eventually, when, when afterwards, when I did that, and I got the value square root of 8, 3. What I did was I pushed enter to pull out this value again, the square root 8, 3. I punched the green button right here, and then I pushed enter. And then what happens, they gave me the value square root 8, 3, which is going to equal to 9.11043. And thus, because there's some round off that does exist, what's going to eventually occur is that you're going to find out the answer to this is going to be D, as in dog. And that concludes my explanation for number 17. And so just to continue on to the next question, for number 18, so as f of x says, what does f of x approach this gets infinitely larger? So it's going to be e. Okay, so for number 18, I was able to do this question real quickly. Um, and, and the part is that for this type of question, actually, there are multiple ways to do this question. There is a longer way to do this and the shorter way. And I'm going to show you both ways real quick, just in case you forget the faster way method. So the, sh the, the, the short, longer way, the longer way is literally when I take f of x equals to 3x plus 12 over 2x minus 12. The longer way, and you should know this just in case you want to be, you know, make sure you understand how to do it in case of like you forget or like you get really nervous and you're rushing and whatever not, okay? The idea is that when I have 3x plus 12 over 2x minus 12, it's the idea that, that as x gets larger, it's going to infinitely get near to a specific value. 
And so, for example, I'm going to go ahead and th write 3 times 0 plus 12 divided by 2 times 0 plus 12. I'm going to plug in 0 on purpose because you're going to see that it's going to start at 1. That's the idea. And if I keep taking the same value, and let's say I plug in 10 into these zeros now, and change it to Z 10 as my x, it's going to become 21 over 16, which is going to be like 1.31, whatever not. And the larger, the larger and larger I make this value, let's say it's 100, because infinitely going towards this value, it's going to become closer and closer to a specific value. And I'm going to notice that it's gradually getting towards a specific value. And if you notice, it started at 1, then it became 1.31, now it's became 1.47. If I change this to even 1,000, and I'm going to go ahead and show that right here, 1,000, it's going to be something, this specific value, which I, if I want it, it's going to be 1.49. So that's how I was able to get to the answer of 1.49702 and whatever not. But it's going to keep going up and up if you notice. And if it infinitely gets near to 3 over 2, if you notice, 3 over 2 is going to be 1.5. So it makes logical sense to get to that answer for E. But that being said, there is an actual faster way to do this question. I want to make sure that you know this. So when I am doing 3x plus 12 or 2x, 2x minus 12, there's actually a concept you need to know is based on the idea of horizontal asymptotes. And how horizontal asymptotes rule works is that there's actually three rules that do exist. And I actually do this in the math lessons portion of my um, the channel. So make sure to look at that. But I do want to just cut to the chase because the powers are exactly the same for top and bottom, a key the numerator and denominator are exactly the same. What's going to happen is that I know that my front, the rule for it, for horizontal asymptotes, is that I take my front coefficients and I'm going to pull them out and that is my horizontal asymptote. Thus why when I was doing this question, I was able to get to the answer E so quickly. And that concludes my, answer, my work for number 18. And to continue on to number 19, so number 19. When I says the world population, 4.3, okay. Okay, I get it. So this was 1990s started. This was this. Okay, wait real quick. Okay. Got it. Okay. So. Okay. Mm. And my final answer is going to be C. So for number 19, my final answer is going to be C. And this is how I was able to go about doing this question. So this constant is based around what we call like the exponential growth. And one of the things, and this is what the question sort of showed. Um, and so it's not as necessary for this question to know this as much, but it does help to just understand the breakdown. So they tell you that in 1990, January 1990, we started at 5.3 billion, okay? So that's a huge number. It's something like 53000,000. So this is gonna be a million. And then I'm gonna change it. So it's gonna look representative of this type of value, but they shorthand it and give you it in just stating it's a billion. And what happens is that this is what they're telling me is the starting value at January 1990. And they actually give us the statement that it grows 2%. And what happens is that this is the equation they give us 1.02 to the t power. Okay, and so this is my starting value. This is my growth, including the 2% growth. And it's going to be T because if we grow or decay, it's always based around the number of one. And so just make sure you understand that. But that being said, that's not the important thing that's tricky about this question. What happens is that they ask me that according to the model population growth, what from 1995 to 1996. Okay, so they're asking from 1995 to January. 1996 and so we have to take into account a few things okay so when i am doing this sort of growth format and understanding this formula and whatever not i have to understand that because we are starting at 1990 this is my equation but when i hit 1995 that means that five years has passed and thus 
when I'm doing this question, I actually understood that 1.02 to the fifth, as I wrote right up here, is going to be the first value. And I understood right off that this is going to be after six years. So yes, it might be a one year gap between these, but I have to keep it relative to 1990 because that's what the question stated was when the population started at 5.3. Okay. After I did that, I actually did was I found out the values right here and I got 5. 85163. I'm just reading off my calculator that I did punch in when I was doing the calculations and such. And then I also got 5.96866. And they said they want the difference, what how, many, how much growth occurred between these two years. And thus I ended up doing was 5.96866 minus 5.85163. And do we know you don't need to write this whole thing? At least like three or four decimal points is fine. And I got 0.117033. And if you look at the answer choices, it does not show that actually. It actually just shows me these million of values. But be aware that because we are in the units of billion, it, this result actually is my million unit value. And so I looked for the one that looked most similar to it. And thus how I was able to get to the answer C. And that concludes my explanation for today. So I focus on numbers 17 through 19 through today. Uh, tomorrow or next time, I will be covering the next questions, numbers 20 through 23. So feel free to um, subscribe to our YouTube channel to get updates quickly or like our Facebook page so that I can continue to make content like this. I hope you have a wonderful day.